Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition, a very special edition of Against the Odds. So as you probably know, the last few weeks we've been counting down the days, counting down the hours for the release of E3 Volt on Magic Online, and it's finally happened, so this week we have a special Against the Odds episode featuring one of my favorite Against the Odds cards from Ethery Volt, and that is Mechanized Production. On Against the Odds, if we get a card that says you win the game, we pretty much got to test it out as soon as possible, see if we can pick up some wins. So that's what we're playing this week, Mechanized Production in Ethery Volt Standard, and then make sure to follow the link in the description to the article on the MTG Goldfish website, and there you will find a poll featuring all Ethery Volt cards, and you can vote for which Ethery Volt card you want to see next week on our Against the Odds episode. Uh, a quick reminder before we break down the deck, if you enjoy this deck and you enjoy Against the Odds in general, it would be awesome of you if you could take a quick second, click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk mechanized production in standard. And Mechanized Production itself is a 4-mana aura. We put it on an artifact we control. To be in your upkeep, it copies the artifact. And then if we have 8 or more artifacts with the same name as the one that we're enchanting with Mechanized Production, we win the game. So there's a few different things you can do with Mechanized Production. Uh, it's possible to just use it for value, doubling Panharmonicons or Metalwork Colossuses or any of those big artifacts. So that's pretty sweet. You can also use it with tokens, like Servo Tokens, for example. But I think the most competitive thing to do with it is probably Clue Tokens. So as I went to build this deck, it was kind of a toss-up between Servos and Clues. Servos have the upside of being actually creatures so again attack and block and all that stuff the problem is servos also die to creature removal so if our plan is to put a four mana enchantment on a one one creature that's probably going to end badly on the other hand Putting a mechanized production on a clue token means our opponent needs an artifact removal spell, or I guess an enchantment removal spell, but artifacts more likely, to actually get rid of our combo. Then, we have a ton of different things that mechanized production does. While the end goal is to win the game with those clue tokens, we get to do a lot of sweet things along the way. So, how are we making clues for mechanized production? And we have a bunch of different options. We actually have 16 different cards that produce a clue token. Thraben Inspector... One drop lets us chump block. It's the only creature in our main deck. It makes a clue when it enters the battlefield. So we play it on turn one, get a bit of value. Then we have a bunch of blue cards that kind of slow down the opponent. Press for answers and Jace's Scrutiny are pretty similar. They're basically ways to keep from taking damage from a creature for one turn. Press for answers, taps that creature down, doesn't un untap. We also get a clue. Jace's Scrutiny. Gives a creature negative four, negative O, which is usually enough to fizzle an entire attack. So we can use these to slow the game down while we're waiting to get our mechanized production online and kind of take over the game. Confirm Suspicions is awesome. It's pretty expensive, five mana counter, but it gives us three clue tokens, which means if our goal is to get to eight clue tokens to win with mechanized production, Confirm Suspicion gets us almost half of the way there by itself. So if we can get a few clues from Thraben Inspector, start creating some on our upkeep with mechanized production, we can counter something on our opponent's turn, hopefully go from like five clues up to eight clues or four clues up to seven clues, get the clue at the beginning of our upkeep and just win the game, kind of by surprise, while also protecting ourselves. There's also some other tricks with this as well. So when it comes to abusing our clues and abusing mechanized production, on level one, they draw us cards. However, there's a card in standard called Inspiring Statuary, a three mana artifact that gives all non artifacts improvise that turns our clues into something much, much more. Essentially, if we have an inspiring statuary on the battlefield, 
Each clue that we make is a Mind Stone. We can tap it for one mana. It can't cast artifacts, but whatever. That's not a huge deal. We don't have that many artifacts. So we can tap it for a mana, and we can pay two and sack it, and we get a new card. So it is almost exactly a Mind Stone. So as we are casting our spells, making our clues, copying those clues, or creating new ones with mechanized production, they're doing so much more than just sitting on the battlefield. They're actually adding mana for a bunch of other stuff. So this is kind Kind of the key thing to the deck. The other thing that makes this really important is Inspiring Statuary makes all of our other spells cheaper. So we play Inspiring Statuary, say on turn three. Maybe we have a couple of clues on the battlefield from Press for Answers and Thraben Inspector. On turn four, we confirm suspicions, and confirm suspicions with Inspiring Statuary is just an absurd magic card. We can likely cast it for two blue mana, like a counter spell, or a mana drain might even be a better comparison, because we can tap some of the random clues we have around. Cool thing about clues is, they don't need to tap to sack, so we can tap them for mana and still sack them to draw a card if we want to. And then, we counter our opponent's spell, get three more clues, which is essentially two mana, counter any spell, get three mind stones, it's very close to an actual mana drain in standard. Another piece to this deck is Part the Water Veil. So you know I love Part the Water Veil. Take an extra turn. If you get up to nine mana, you can also awaken and get a 6-6 six, six out of the deal while also taking the extra turn. So the thing that makes this sweet is we get a bunch of clues, and here's kind of the whole plan of the deck. We get a bunch of clues on the battlefield with our Thraben Inspectors and our Press for Answers and all that stuff. We hopefully get an inspiring statuary out, and say we have a whole bunch of clues, what we want to do is use Inspiring Statuary to cast Mechanized Production for two blue mana, tapping a couple of our clues, and that's going to enchant one of our clues, and then we can cast Part the Water Veil for two more blue mana, four real mana, by tapping four more clues and our Inspiring Statuary, we take an extra turn, that means our opponent doesn't get a chance to untap and do anything at sorcery speed against our Mechanized Production to deal with our clue tokens, so it's almost four mana, assuming we have enough clues, four mana just win the game on the spot if we can assemble this combo. So this is kind of the payoff. I mean, we can also just part the Water Veil for value, and that's kind of our backup win condition. Tap a bunch of clues, cast a very cheap part the Water Veil with Awaken, get a 6-6, six, six, beat down, maybe do it again. And then, we have a couple of backup plans, and these cards are kind of eh, something I wanted to test out, not super essential. Gante's Etherheart seems sweet with our clue production. We get it on the battlefield. Every time we get a clue token, we get two energy. Once we get a bunch of energy, we sack it and take an extra turn. Kind of like the part the Water Veil, kill with mechanized production, but our opponent gets to see it coming. However, it just sits out there and generates value. And one of Tamio's journal lets us cash in our clues to find mechanized production, find our part of the water veil, find our combo pieces to actually win the game. And then we just have some removal. Fumigate to help stay alive. Quarantine Field actually works super well with Inspiring Statuary because we can use it to pay the X cost. So if we have a bunch of clues out, we can pay two white, tap all of our artifacts, exile two, three, four creatures, for only two real mana, and Metallic Rebuke is a one mana mana leak in our deck pretty much after like turn two, so it's just a super powerful way to keep our opponent's deck in check. As far as the mana base, we get a bunch of dual lands in the blue-white colors, then we have some basic lands, pretty straightforward. In the sideboard, Authority of the Councils hopefully keeps us alive against the Sahili combo, uh, so we don't just die to infinite copycats, so that's why it's in the deck, the only reason it's in the deck. Negate and Metallic Rebuke, more counters to make sure we can force our Part the Water Veils, our Mechanized Productions, our Inspiring Statuaries through our opponent's counter magic, protect them from targeted removal. There's more instant speed artifact removal in the format now than there was when it was just Kaladash, so it's worth being aware of those cards. Quarantine Field and Fumigate gives us more removal. Quarantine Field, like I said, super awesome with Inspiring Statuary, helps against Planeswalkers, other non-creature permanents. Providence, probably looks weird, but when you consider it can potentially be 2 mana, since we tap all our clues, gain 20-something eh, life, it's actually a really powerful effect in this deck, and it's for the aggro matchups, basically to make sure we just don't get run over by our opponent's super fast aggressive draws. Uh, by gaining a whole bunch of that life back, buying us a couple extra turns to assemble our combo. And Linfala is kind of the same thing as Providence. Doesn't gain us as much life, but it gives us a big flyer, uh, helps shut down our opponent's attacks, maybe gains us some life, gives us a token. And that 
is Mechanized Production for E3 Volt Standard, and that's our Against the Odds for this week. And I have to say, I am so excited for this deck. Mechanized Production is one of my favorite cards in the set. I'm really excited to see if it can work. And like I mentioned before, there's a ton of other things that we can potentially do with that card. I think this is a really cool way of going about abusing it, because it really turns the Mechanized Production into, I guess, the most powerful it can be. It's not just creating a clue to help us win the game, but with Inspiring Statuary, that clue is also generating us mana, so Mechanized Production kind of becomes this card that we get a personal Howling Mind. It also makes an extra mana for us each turn, like we're getting an extra land drop, and then it eventually can win us the game. So it just does so much. We can sack the clues to search through our deck while we're trying to find answers, find a removal. Eventually, we can use Confirm Suspicion or other clue makers to get the eight clues and win the game. So I really think there's a good chance of this working. Plus, we got Part the Water Veil, and Part the Water Veil is on my list of all-time favorite against the odds cards. I'm just, I love taking extra turns, and Part the Water Veil is so sweet. I'm also super excited for Inspiring Statuary. I think this card is utterly broken, and I'm excited to give it our first shot in E3 Volt Standard in this deck, because I think it'll be very powerful in this deck. The plan of using it to make clues and using it to make cards that normally wouldn't be good into good cards is just really exciting to me. If you think about Press for Answers and Jace's Scrutiny, they aren't great cards. They make us a clue, they help keep us alive. However, if you look at them as one in a blue, create a Mind Stone, with Inspiring Statuary, of course, create a Mind Stone and do a little something else. That's an absurd card. If Mind Stone was legal in Standard, it would be played all the time, everywhere. It's just so good. Wizards doesn't put those type of cards in the format. And with Inspiring Statuary, that's what Thraben Inspector turns into. A one mana Mind Stone that leaves behind a body. That's what Jace's Scrutiny and Press for Answers turn into. Two mana, do something, get a Mind Stone. So I'm really excited for just all the synergies in this deck. And I think that there's a decent chance that it could actually work. So anyway, that is Mechanized Production for Ether Revolt Standard. And that's our Against the for this week so thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoy the gameplay videos and i will talk to you soon